Here we go, episode six of the Hibs Ramble, the one you've all been waiting for. Uh, it's myself, Craig, and Liam again this week. Liam, how are you, mate? I'm not too bad, mate. How's yourself? Uh, I've just about put my toys back in the pram. <laughs> Got your after, dummy back in. Aye, after what transpired yesterday. Um, I think we can leave that for another, another show. Apologies for not having an episode out after the St Mirren game. Um, neither myself nor Liam could make it, so we didn't think it was there was no point in putting an episode out for for neither of us that were Especially at the game. Safe at the to say, feet. yeah, safe to say, shite result, and we're only interested in providing you with premium <laughs> Hibernian content, and that wouldn't have been the case because we weren't there. Um, so I so we'll just go through today. We'll just be talking about a review of the transfer window, really incomings, outgoings, um, and a quick look at Kilmarnock tomorrow. And also some questions for you guys that have got in touch. So myself and Liam have given each of our summer signings a number out of 10. And we've got a sort of sliding scale, whether that falls under a terrible window, an average window, and an Ian Gordon is the best thing to ever happen to Hibs type window. <laughs> now, going by my score, I don't think the the Ian Gordon best ever is going to be hit, but we'll start with we're going to make it easier as well. Um, and because I'm quite pedantic with things, we've done it in squad number order, so we'll go from one all the way through to 77. And we've left the, the three new guys announced yesterday until the end. So we'll start off with David Marshall. I've given Marshall a nine, yeah, I've given Marshall a nine as well. I think it's clear to see that he's. Is real, real quality. Um, a massive upgrade on Matt Macy. And I think not only does he bring the, the brilliant goalkeeper into to Hibs, he's also a real leader. He's been given the captain saying and everything. So it's uh, it's been a, a real good, well thought through um, signing from Hibs on and off the park. Don't know if you no, I agree. Craig. Yeah, no, I do. I think you can see when he uh, during games as well, his his urgency. He's constantly, you know, if the ball goes out for a goal kick or whatever, or even a shot comes to him, he's always wanting to get the ball moving quick. Whereas with Macy, Macy was quite languid, and you know, you could almost extend that to Rocky as well. There was never a real urgency about Rocky getting the ball back into play. So, no, it's good. I mean, it's. You know, only a year ago he was the number one pick for Scotland at the Euros. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I know he had a tough, it. he had a tough time at Derby and QPR, but you can't knock his quality. I mean, he's you know he's been there and done it at the highest level throughout his entire career. Brilliant signing. So he's a nine for me. Next up is Lewis Miller. I've given Miller a four. I've given Miller a five, um, purely based on the fact that I feel for me anyway the jury's still out. Yeah. I've not seen an awful lot of him. What I have seen of him, I'm, it, it doesn't fill me with great confidence. But I think that there is something in there. Um, I hope there's something in there anyway. I mean, he he's a big, strong laddie. Powerful, powerful player. Jury's out. Five, I think, is a fair assessment. I'm, and, and this is not me judging him on how how I think they are as players out of 10. I think this is the signings like, and how it, how it fits into the club and everything. So I think a five yeah. is a fair a fair assessment of where he is at the moment. Um, yeah. And in terms I'm sorry, of probably, probably should have added that caveat at the start. We're not rating them based on what we think of them as players. Yeah. We're basing them on... Their, well, I suppose you are, it is based on their ability a wee bit, but based on how they fit into the club since they've signed. Yeah. Um. For me, Miller gets a four because, like like with you, when I have seen him, I've not been impressed. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was Falkirk away. No, no, it wasn't Falkirk away. It was Morton at home. Yeah, he played the right card on the left, great. and he wasn't great. And then added to the the comments coming out for Johnson on Saturday about um, you know, not being ready to go on. I think mm -hmm. I'm hoping that there's. I mean, you, you just need to look across the city and see how. Their Australian players have made an impact, and we well, Atkinson, Atkinson, similar fucking shite. 
Which well, Rose has done all right. Devlin's done all right, and I think we thought we were going to get something along those lines. But we might, he, he might still, he might still deliver for us. But for me, Jury's yeah. still out. I'm not going to judge him one way or another because I don't feel like he's played enough minutes. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, next up, Marion Chabria. I've given Chabria a six. I've given Chabria seven. Seven. Aye. So I've given him a six because, and I've said this a few times in the group chat. I still feel like there's something holding him back at times. Like if he seems like he could be that sort of David Murphy esque player who could get up and in the touchline, but there seems to be there's been times in games where he's had that opportunity to go, and he's just no went. Um, and then you know the, the goal we conceded away to Livingston, the first goal. And even on Saturday, his slack no. pass, and then he's, you know, he's overcommittal on Saturday. Um, I know, obviously, he's just he suffered a, a tough time with his, with his dad, and it's to be commended how he performed in the Rangers game when he came on after that. But um, mine's is mine's is an upwards six, like a six, six and a half. Touching into a, I touching into a seven. It's just those those two incidents, the Livy game, and the uh, Saint Mirren game that's that's held me up at a six. Yeah, well. I'm at a seven because I think I've seen more good than bad from Chibraya. Um I think he's been a an upgrade on Josh Doig, which gets him a higher score as well. Because in terms of signing, we could have easily went out and and got a a player who wasn't a ready made left back. But we've went out and we've got we've got someone who seems like he's kind of in the Borna Barisic mould. Um, Croatian left back likes to get up and down the wing. Yeah. And for me, I think he's a good player, and I think well, he's maybe a little bit raw at times, but he is he is still he's only like twenty four, twenty five. I mm. mean, he, he he should be kicking these things out of his game relatively soon. I yeah. think he'll I think he'll kick on and be a really important player for us for the rest of the season. No, I I tend to agree. Like I said, mine's is it could have went either way. I think when you give a seven, you indicate that you're overall happy. Yeah. Whereas I just think those those two be blips against Livingston and St Mirren have kind of held it back. Uh, next, Nohan Kenna. I've given him Nohan a six as well. I've given um, Nohan a seven. Uh, he started really well. I mean, I thought he was he was good in the games against Hearts and St Johnston. Um, and then he just made that, you know, that we're talking about the Livingston goal. Just the fact he's not played much since then as well. You've, yeah, kind of his, his game time's kind of limited. Whereas I felt if he'd kept playing, he probably would have been got a higher mark. I do like him. I think he's what we've been missing in the middle of the park. And if Johnson is to be believed uh, through Patrick McPartland, what he said in his one of his articles yesterday, that midfield three of Campbell, Newell, and Doyle Hayes won't play together again. So, so he'll maybe come right back in. Leads you to believe that that Nohan Ken will step back in. Um, so I, I'm maybe being a bit overly harsh, but I think a six for me. A seven for me. I like Kenna, and I think he is what we've been screaming out for. So he gets an extra point for me for fitting into the system that we well, we really needed someone who is a holding midfielder, a proper holding midfielder. So that's what he gets from me. I like him. I like him on the ball. I think he's a good player. He's still very very young, and um, it seems to me like there's. There's going to be a real player in there that will hopefully make us a couple of million in the future. Well, football managers, to be believed, they certainly will. Exactly. Uh, next up, Jair Tavares. I've given Jair a five. Um, oh, I've given him a four. Yeah, solely. I mean, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt in that he's a 19 year old laddie coming across to a new country, new environment, new surfaces. Hmm. He's no being great. I feel bad. I do. I do he's, feel bad giving him a four. But he's, I mean, but at the end of the day, been... he's been he's been signed for the first team. He's been given the ten. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think, uh, not in my eyes, but I, I think certainly in a lot of folks' eyes, there's an expectation put on someone when that's they're given why, a number like that. Yeah, that's why I've given him a four. Is because of the expectation that I had when he come in and he's taking the number off Martin Boyle. And you think, oh, this boy's going to be the real deal. If mm -hmm. uh, I get that, I, I, it doesn't that doesn't doesn't he sway it for me? 
but I can understand why why people think that when you you know you you associate you know if you think of Hibs number tens they roll off the tongue, um, yeah. Over the last you know twenty twenty five years and then you know going back to like the tornadoes days for the older generation, but I still think there's a lot more to come. But he's verging on a, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I mean, I hope I hope because he's got all the makings of a good player because he can get up and down that line really well and he's got a, a few good skills in his locker and you can see it you can see glimpses of it yeah. but I think he's maybe been rushed in a bit too quickly yeah, um, I think he maybe would have been better placed maybe in the development squad for a wee while just to get used to the, yeah. the sort of rough and tumble of Scottish football yep. a bit um, next Ryan Schofield I've just given a five I think that's a fairly Me I mean I don't think we'll see much of him in all honesty, especially now we're out of the League Cup. It's obviously yep. been a sort of placemaker until um Dabrowski's fit again. Uh, so next would be Momo Bojang, a five for me. I've given him a six. I, I like what I've seen when he's come on. I, I mean, to be he's... fair, in the league, he's, he's came on for the last, like, two, three minutes. Um, I think the only chance he's really had, I mean, he had that, he had a chance against Bonnie Rig when he came on. He did well. Yeah. And then he also had a chance against uh, the one against Livy that folks said was a sitter, which I don't really think it was nah. a sitter. Um, I still, I, you know, you're signing somebody for the Gambian Premier League, which isn't the most reputable, you know, league in the world. Your expectations are not high, but, you know, if that's the sort of market we're looking at, we've obviously seen something that can identify with, but for me, I've not seen really anything from him yet, and I didn't really think it was fair to give him a higher or lower score based on that. Yeah, to be to be honest, man, I don't mind him. I think he's a good option to have. He's never, I don't think, well, at the moment anyway, in my eyes, he's not going to be a starter by any way, shape or form. But, you know, I think he's one of these players who you can look to on the bench and think, oh, he's got a bit of pace. Maybe stick him on for the last 15 minutes, see if he can terrorise a, a bit of the defence. So, I think that that's what he's been used for so far, and you know he's he's done all right. Obviously, he's not scored, but um, he's he's done all right for me. I think um, remains to be seen, especially with the other additions that we've had, uh, what impact he'll make. Next up, Ewan Henderson. Obviously, Ewan's counted because he technically joined the club permanently in the summer. Um, Henderson, I've got a six. I've um, got a six still, as well. Henderson's one with us. Blows hot and cold for me. Yeah, I mean, he, you can only judge it against the opposition, but I mean, he done, I thought he looked decent in the League Cup games. Yeah. Um, especially Bonnie Rigg. Scored a few goals but, as well, didn't he? Yeah, but in the league, he's just been, he's just been off it. It's just a you bit know, lightweight. The, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, there's, you didn't want your team to be full of six foot two bruisers. I mean, there is there is room in the in the team for these sort of technical players, but I don't think he's his technical ability is enough. You know, when you compare him to somebody like naturally Scott Allen, Scott had that bit of physicality and that bit of know how how to use his body at the right times and and still be able to play. Whereas I don't think Henderson's at that has got that. So a game intelligence yet? Yeah, no, I it's agree. A, it's a six for me. No, I, I agree with all that. I don't think I've got anything else to add on Hendo. Yeah. Next up is Ellie Yuan. So I've given Ellie a seven. I've given him an eight. Uh, he's, I mean, he's he's not scored yet, but he's been sort of vital. You know, the the two goals against uh, that he set up against Rangers and Hearts. You know, especially in the Hearts game, I think to make the sort of run that he did and pick Boyle out when he did. Um, I love his work rate. Yeah, so that, uh, that for me stop. is is the big thing about Elian and the amount of times that he recovers the ball in the final third, like down at the corner. I think is testament to how hard he works, and I think that that's. I mean, he's obviously a workhorse, but you know, he's quick. He's Good with the ball at his feet for a for a big laddie. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that's missing from him at the moment is goals, but um, and no doubt that they'll come. 
and I, I think he'll probably score tomorrow. But I, I mean, think, um, I think Lee Johnson did so say far. that Lee Johnson did say that when the when the when the boys figure out how to utilize his pace, yeah, then it'll be a danger because he has. I mean, you've seen it with the the goal against um, with Boyle's goal against Hearts. I mean, he brushed Halkett aside in like the ninety fourth, yeah. ninety fifth minute on a day when it was sweltering hot. Big lad, you know big I mean? lad like that. Is strong but so fast. Yeah, yeah. I think seven, seven for me, but a lot more to come from him. And I do think, like you say, it's the goals that are missing. But I think as soon as he gets one, it'll be you know, yeah, it'll, it'll be just it'll, a, it'll snowball. It'll start further in. Aye, yeah. therefore. Next is Rocky. I've given Rocky an eight. I've given Rocky a seven. No, no. But um, I think if you'd have asked me. Like with the last few games of last season, I probably would have given Rocky a four or a five. Uh, I feel like he's a completely different player this season. He's been really, really good up till his injury, and it it seems now that we're a wee bit lost without him. I know. When it's when it was like, oh, we're we're trying to fit him in somewhere at the start of the season. So uh, I think he's he's a seven with a lot more to come for me. Um. A seven at the moment, purely just because, um, you know, he's he's had that much of a an upgrade. But for me, he's he's been really good so far, and I'm really wishing that he was back for a wee bit quicker. I know, I know. When you look at the contrast of how he reacted when he was signed, exactly. Even the way Hibs, even the way Hibs announced it, and even the way that Lee Johnson spoke about him. Yeah. Um. You know, as I think it shows. I mean, you look at you take the Rangers game as an example. When we changed things up, it was Paul Hanlon that went off, and then even when it got to like the ninety first or ninety second minute when we're going for that goal, Ryan mm-hmm. Porteous went off. Yeah, um, I think it tells know, a lot. I mean, Walkie he... was the only the only starting centre half left on the park, and I think you know he's he's obviously worked his bollocks off in training because there was that sort of rumor going about when he signed that we were looking to get rid of him as quick as we got him. You know, you had the. Uh, the conversation and apparently Ben Kinsell said that he was asking why do the fans hate him? You know, he's had you know, yeah. the terrace the terrace said something about him. There's another Scottish That was football. a that was a disgrace, by the way. We'll need to There's call, another I'm, Scottish I'm football podcast. Out. Another Scottish football podcast that said something yeah. about him. Like you say, the terrace, they've got guys an absolute nothing to podcast that one. Champion men's mental health. And yet they were happy to jump on the bandwagon of Lambaston. Yeah, it was a total disgrace. A young guy who was who was low on confidence, and then he's been an integral part of our team so far this season. And, much, and we'll, much miss him. More to come. we'll miss him. We'll miss him. We will. We hundred percent will. We already did. We did. We did against St. Mirren. Mm-hmm. You know, we've not lost while he's when he's been in the team this season. Exactly. That well in the league anyway, and that tells you a lot. Quite uh, nice. Next up, Kyle McClelland. I've given Kyle a five. Um, he's not really had much game time. I thought, I mean, I was probably an outlier in this, but I thought he did. I thought he looked good against Falkirk in the first half before he got taken off. I know he came on against Livingston, and then we conceded the second goal, but that was absolutely nothing to do with him. Yeah, um, he's a uh, very much a uh, let's wait and see. I think. Yeah, no, I I agree. I, we were talking about this on the Twitter Spaces last night. Uh, we're down the slope. Um. Props to down the slope for hosting that by the way. Yeah, no, was, uh, that was really good. I, I really was upstairs, so I couldn't, I couldn't contribute, but I, I listened to, I listened to most of it, and it was really enjoyable. There was quite a lot of, quite a lot of people. I think Harry said that there was about a thousand people listening, which was really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were talking about McClelland, and I've given him a six. Um, I think he's really good on the ball. I can't remember who it was. It was that was saying this, but. Really good on the ball. Looks like a really intelligent defender. Does the simple things well, but uh, just a little bit lightweight. But that's his age. He's a young laddie, um, and I'm sure that with time he'll bulk up a bit, and we'll probably see him in the first team next season. Him yeah. and Jack Bryden and Ryan Porteous back three. Yeah, I told you, Jack Bryden's one that they've got high, high, high hopes for. Yeah. Uh, next up, Aidan McGeady. I've given McGeady a four. I've given McGeady a six. Uh, it's not from what I've seen. I know he's got injured, but you know the penalty against Bonnie Rigg was horrendous. The penalty against Martin was horrendous. Falkirk away wasn't great. 
Um, I mean, he's on, you know, Open Goal podcast talking about. I don't think he's talking great. Of are the we club. watching Celtic? Nah, uh, Celtic B. Are we when Hibs are playing? I don't know. I just and now he's out injured for like another eight ten weeks. I just for me, I don't think it's been it's been a good sign. And, and even now, when you look at the the numbers in the squad, even when he's back fit, I don't see where he fits in. Nah. I mean, I think maybe a six is a bit generous for me as well now that we talk about it. Um, In terms of him as a player, I think that there's definitely quality there that can add to the starting 11 or the bench anyway. Uh, In terms of his off-field antics and the way that he's been carrying himself, I know he's injured, but I mean, going to see, going to watch Celtic be when you're a, when you're a Hibs player, it's just, it's just a bit silly. Unless like he's, his nephew or that or his laddie was playing in in the game then you would maybe understand but I don't even think that was the case disappointing no, no. but a six for me because when we signed them we were all we were quite buzzing because you can what you're getting with the McGeady don't you yeah no I'd agree uh, next up so the last one of the players who've played is uh, the star man himself Martin Boyle I've given Boyle a nine I've given Boyle a 10, purely based on if you'd have asked us all at the start of the window, if there's one player that you could get, realistically, who would it be? And I think we probably all would have said Martin Boyle. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the, I mean, his, his impact has been, well, I mean, obviously the goals against Rangers and uh, Hearts speak of that. The Livy and St Mirren performance is no great, but I think for me, it's it's the way that his, you know, the way that he lifted, just his name lifted the whole, I mean, that game against Hearts, you know, we woke up in the morning and it sort of started dripping through that he could be available, he could be yeah. available. And then bang, he's announced as a sub. And then he's even scored. when he was warming up, every time he touched the ball and in the warm up, he was cheered, his name was cheered. He was introduced again before the game. And then even when he warmed up, can he came in the side of the fame when they go up like sort of the West, Past yeah. you and not past me. Yep. Um. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, the only thing I can remember, like liking it to, it is when Derek Arden came back. Yeah. No, I felt and the same. There was just, there was just a buzz. It was. Um, it was really really the, weird, wasn't it? Yeah, the script was almost written for him to to score, and then he goes and does it again against Rangers as well. But I, I think it, I feel quite daft talking about um. As like a brand new signing because he's no, he's only really been away for six months. I think he's been away on loan, and it? Aye, but oh, no, no I think he's given him, him a ten. For for me, him and him and Marshall are the are the standouts. They're the marquees, um, aren't they? Yeah, I think if you're ranking it as a top three, it's a uh, Marshall, Boyle, and Rocky for me with Elu and just behind them, and then the rest are sort of mixture of mm, like could be better, could be worse, kind of. Yeah. I um, think my top three is well on my scores anyway. It's where with the ones that have played. It's Boyle, Marshall, and then Yuan, with a couple yeah. of sevens in behind there. So the the new guys, I've given them all a score of five, purely because I think that's middle of the road. We've we've not seen them. We don't know what they're going to offer. Um, so just quickly with them, Will Fish signing from I've, Man United. I've, I've a I've actually given, given them proper scores, yeah. Have you? Nah, I don't think I can until we see them play. So I give Will Fisher six because I think it's difficult to lay hopes on young laddie from Man United. We've seen this script so many times yeah. with Daniel Boateng, Daniel Boateng. Nathan yep. Wood. <laughs> um, I mean, and the, the boy Johnson from uh, Leicester. Darnell Johnson. From Leicester. I think it's it would be unfair to pin hopes on him. I think even if Rocky was fit, I'd have been looking to bring in a centre half anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um but I would have been happier with a with a more experienced than a more ready made centre half. Yeah. I mean you never played I mean you got recalled for Stockport because he was not getting a game. But that you can read so many different things into that. Um, yeah. But he's a he's a he's very much a wait and see. 
Uh, next one, Mikola. Kuk- how are we doing this? Kuk- Mikola Kukarevich. Kuk- Kukarevich. Kukarevich. He was completely left field. Yeah, um, did not expect I know, that. Obviously, like you said, listening to the spaces last night, um, I think it was Liam uh, for down the slope that Who had broke said the that there was a Ukrainian Ukrainian boy, another striker, six foot four, um, looks to be sort of utilising Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson spoke a lot when he's when he got appointed about his contacts at the City Group. Um, he signed from I want to say Troy, Troy, Troy. Troy, Troy is. Troy's or Troy, or probably Troy, uh, he is Troy, something like that. Belgian they're part, not the that... French. Oh, they're they're, French. He was on loan to the the Belgian side, oh, well. um, and but they're part of the City Football Group, so the group of the Man City overall that owns all yeah. these different various clubs throughout the world. Um, I've only seen one video, which is of them scoring against Leicester in pre-season. It's a good goal as well. I seen well taken finish. Six foot four. Very. It's been a while since we had a a big tall, but like an actual. I know Dodge was was tall, but he wasn't a tall, tall. Do you know what I mean? Like a mm-hmm. six three, I think, six four kind yeah. of guy. So interesting to see. He's another loan. Have you given him a five as well? Yeah. So I've just uh, given them all a, this yeah. flat score. Well, I've given him a seven because <clears throat> I feel even without seeing him play, I think that he'll give us a different dynamic up front. Yeah. And it's what Taylor made we need as a for club. as well. It's what we need as a club. Yeah. Um, so that's why I've given him a seven. It's it might sound stupid. I've never seen him play. I've only seen that one clip of him. But a seven purely because well, I, I don't think we really we didn't necess, necessarily need someone to come in and fill that Dodge gap, but it will help giving us a yeah a completely different dynamic. Rather than just a uh, quick strikers, at least there'll be someone that we can put on to lump the ball up to. No, I agree. And then finally, uh, last but by no means least, <laughs> the arrow man himself, uh, the one who's given us uh, wet, wet sheets all, all yesterday, Sean McCurdy. <laughs> Sean McCurdy? No. Sean, no, who the fuck? Sean Harry McCurdy. McCurdy. Sean McCurdy Harry used McCurdy. to play for Hearts. So he did. I don't know where the fuck I've got Sean from. Jeez, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you, mate. We were all still active in the group chat at fucking quarter past one this morning. I know. Waiting for it to happen. And I eventually fell asleep. And then Emma woke me up 15 minutes later to say he's signed. Uh, so, aye, Harry McCurdy. Um, seems a bit of a bam. <laughs> like, I think we way. need that. We it need seems that. He's, we've not really had a bam since Cummins, really. No. Can somebody that can noise fuck up and get under the opposition skin. Um. So, based on what I've seen at Swindon, and uh, I think uh, JD Hibbs uh, put out a tweet earlier that he'd seen uh, that showed like his stats and he scores quite high in the percentiles for goals, chances created. He's hopeless in the air, but I don't think got other people. Them for. Got other he looks, people to do that. He certainly looks like somebody who's capable of playing across the front in all in all areas and possibly dropping back maybe deeper as well. Yeah. Um, so I think on the face of it, he seems, you know, that we'll, we'll not get into the whole scenario of yesterday, but um, the fact that, you know, he was in HTC for what felt like fucking ages <laughs> makes me think that it was Sunday that Johnson really, really wanted. So Yeah, I thought that too. But still a five, but given, got high hopes for him. So I've given him a seven um, because I like what I've seen of him in the videos and stuff and his celebration is absolutely quality um, but f- see for me Craig he, he looks like a Hibs player doesn't he yeah he, he's, he's in that kind of mould of of being in, like just a, a Raj up front we've no had one for ages like you say like since Cummins um, so it's it's a it's it's good to good to see him in and I think it gave the fan base a lift as well because once they've seen once we've seen all, all the all the videos and and stuff of his celebration and his goals and all that I think we were kind of had our hearts set on landing him yeah. so it's been it's been good to get that done and over the line and I, I would imagine that he's he's happy to get that done and over the line as well yeah based on his dress sense as well um, he had a Cornell laddie, t-shirt on the lad he certainly doesn't lack confidence in himself no. and his um, haircut I might get my yeah. haircut like that 
<laughs> uh, they, so, aye, my total out of everyone is 94. So out of 160. Out of 160 years is 94. So you fall yeah. into the average category. Yeah. Yep. So our categories are 0 to 32 is abysmal. 33 to 64 is below average. 65 to 96 is average. 97 to 128 is decent. And 129 to 160 is our best window ever. All praise Ian Gordon. And my total is 106. So I fall into the decent category. Yeah, so I think we're still... We've spoken about it. We've already spoken about it uh, with regards to the centre mid, centre the defence. I mean, you go through all those players, and two of them are centre midfielders. One of them was already technically in the building, mm-hmm. so um, I still think we're lacking. We're lacking in the middle of the park. That would have pushed it for an all right window to a good window. But me. what about McGuinness coming back though? But he's mate, he's played like thirty six games and he's two years at Hibs. But can he be do you know what I mean? All it takes yeah. is one nick. I think we've spoken about this as well. It could, you know, is it a psychological thing now as well and that he's been out for so long. I mean it's no it's not even as if he's just had these injuries at Hibs either. Um, you know, he'd done his cruise when he was at St. Mirren. Yeah. So it's not like what you're saying is baseless and that we can't rely on him. I think he's shown throughout his career that solely based on injuries, he can't be relied on. So if we yeah. can get the McGuinness fight fit and stay fit that started last season, then we'll be in a hell of a lot better position. I can say yeah. that because I thought he was he was outstanding at the start of last season. But it's just whether he can stay fit. That's the get fit in the first place yeah. and then stay fit. However, based on what was in that article again about the midfield not playing together, and I think maybe one of the boys alluded to this in the space as well, is, is he maybe closer than what we're letting on? I think he's pretty, I mean, it looks like he's in full training. So is it eggs? Are, we just, are, they, are they really putting the eggs in the basket thinking that he's ready and hoping maybe. that in the next couple of weeks he'll be, he'll be back in the squad? Um, quickly, just on the outgoings. So obviously, Dodge went away on loan uh, to Kilmarnock. I've got them all here, Craig. On Wednesday, I don't think we need to go through like the development loans and the. I think the two main ones, obviously, that I've left in the last couple of days were were Dodge and Dylan Tate. Yeah, Dodge for me has been a good. He's been a good player for us overall, I think. But his injury and then his bout of COVID last year has pretty done him. Done him a bit. Yeah, um, and it was quite sad to see how little an impact he was having in games. Granted, he set up uh, Campbell for the equaliser against Rangers, but other than that, he was nothing like the... Nothing like the dodge of... of, uh, of that we'd seen. Yeah. Eddie May's dodge. He was, yeah. was nothing like that. <laughs> but <laughs> see, for the rest of the outgoings, we've got Scott Allen away to Arbroath, Gogic away to St Mirren, Mackey to Falkirk, Ennis Murray to FC Edinburgh, Jamie Murphy and Dre Wright to St Johnston, Macy to Luton, McGinn to Motherwell, Mitchell to Partick, Connor Young to Rangers, and then Josh Doig away to Verona. I think we've done well to keep a lot of our good players and move yeah. move the deadwood on. Um, I think and... if you compare it back, if you compare the names that have went out versus the names that have came in, you could argue that we are overall stronger, but I would still so. still lacking, like you say, that experienced centre half and an experienced ball carrier. In the middle of the yeah. park, I think we're I think we're now, if anything, a bit too top heavy at the top end of the park. I think maybe a little bit. Got, but I mean, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? No, it is. But given we've got Nisbet to come back, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've got Melkerson as well to come back into the mix, having back come back for injury. Yeah, um, exactly. It's... And then we've got all the players coming back for loan as well, like Dan McKay, Jack Braden, Runa Hauga, yeah, Alan Del Pierre as well. I'll put my hat on it that. Majority of them will not see competitive football in a Hibs jersey. Well, I hope Delphiere. Delphiere, does. Delphiere like and Bryden. Delphiere and Bryden, I think, are maybe the only two. The rest of them, like Dan McKay, I don't think he's got any chance. Um, Dylan Tate, I don't think he'll have any chance. Um, so I. Yeah, you just need to wait and see the way. See what see what happens. Now that we've wrapped up the transfer window. Um, some news coming out of the club this morning that Lee Johnson will miss the game tomorrow 
due to having an emergency gallbladder surgery. Um, take, got taken ill yesterday. So best wishes to to Lee Johnson. Hope he recovers soon. Hope he recovers well. And I just hoping we can get the the three points in his absence. Uh, that I've, I don't know if I'm being totally honest. I don't even know what your gallbladder is. I don't know if that's where you store your pish. I don't know what happened. I don't know what so, the script is. If he's taken on well, I don't think um, gallstones is very nice. Yeah, glad he's got the the required emergency treatment as quick as what he did. And here's hoping we see him back on the touchline. Maybe that's what the hold up was with McCurdy. No, possibly. Maybe, maybe not. Is, Who knows? Is McCurdy, is McCurdy a part time surgeon? I think so. He might. He must have been like get McCurdy in so that he can uh, get the surgery done. Lee, on Lee, me. Lee, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Show me where it hurts. Fucking <laughs> 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 uh, we've got a couple of questions uh, coming in first one's for Haley is how do we fit Kukarevich into a song oh to be fair, you could um, tequila nah it doesn't work Mikola ah I suppose so Kukarevich We've got I think it's, uh... Kukarevich. We've got. Oh no, that gives me PTSD. <laughs> Can I be singing that song? <laughs> Kukarevich, Kukarevich. Let me have a think about it, Haley, and I'll get I'll get back to you. Hey, Kukarevich, I'll get back to you next week. Kukarevich, hey, Kukarevich. <laughs> we'll get back to you well, next week, Haley. We're we're a proper right. song. We're to be good. Fair, we're quite. We're quite good at the the old making up tunes on the spot. Uh, we are. Granted, I think Cook Kukarevich is a we're difficult no, name. We're no judge, jury, and executioner whether they're good or shite. We just make them up and see how they land. <laughs> um, I don't think any of them have landed. Aye, nah, no, <laughs> yet. We'll need to get in touch with the Block Seven boys and send over a hymn sheet. We'll get them on the pod. We'll, we'll get them on the pod. What, tell you what, anything to break up the two 0 down at Tiny, like just yeah. There's an awful lot. It's good, moment, but there's a time and a place for it. At one nil down, one nil down away to Livingston is not the place for it. No, um, but no. To be fair, credit to them though, because they keep it. They keep at least that song going for the full ninety minutes. Aye. But no, they, they have been a lot admit, better this season, haven't they? I must admit, I am enjoying my seat in the famous five, given that I stood next to them last season. Um, just the drum, the drum just does. Oh, true, in. yeah. Especially when you're see when you're sitting right next to it, you can actually feel your the inside of your body vibrating. It's old age, Craig, because I feel yeah, the exact same is. in the West. A hundred percent is. I don't mind stand, right. like standing near it on at like at away days, but home games is like my break. Aye, especially for with you boys in the the prawn sunny stand. Well, this is it's just it's a Rick Hibbs fan stand, isn't it? So. Yeah. Uh, right. Next question is from our own resident sketchers wearer, Liam Riley, <laughs> and he's asked. Uh, he's got two questions in one. So how many I'm of at, the new? To be fair, see before you start, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to dig him out here because he he sent me uh, a draft of this question earlier on and uh, asked me to proofread it. So he didn't get slagged for making any spelling or did grammar they to, did, 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 they need to, did they need to run it through Microsoft Word with a? <laughs> The red underlines. They had to use Grammarly. Oh, jeez, oh. <laughs> anyway, Skechers has asked, how many of the new signings and first-team regulars will be here at this time next season? That's... I think it all just depends on how we go because there could be players that we're eager to get rid of. There could be players that other teams are looking to bring in. It could be the fact that we just don't extend the, the loan deals for Yuan and Bojang and so on and so forth. So yeah. Um I don't think it's it's a question that we can really answer with a proper number, but I don't know. I think for the I think for the loan sign ins I would if he continues the way that he started, I would expect efforts to be made to secure Eli Yuan. Yeah. Depending on the terms of the deal. Um I don't think we'll see Bojang Beyond this season, unless you know, unless something something major happens with him, yeah. um, in terms of the the rest, I mean, I would expect to see Nohan Kenny here. McCurdy's on a three year deal, so we'll see him. 
Yeah. Uh, Kukarevich could be a low. I don't know if that, I don't think Hibs have announced if there's an option to buy in there. I would like to think there is. I think um, there usually is these days. Isn't even if we don't take it, the option there to. Um, and the next one would be who from the current squad has to improve slash step up or you would be looking to offload in the next two windows. I think we kind of covered that in our, um, well, the first part of it anyway, in our sort of ratings of the players. For me, the two that, well, I suppose the main one I think that I would be looking to, to move on if he doesn't improve would be Tavares. Not permanently, but get him on loan somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think dependent on how the how the leagues are shaping up, you know, come come January, you know, a a short term loan to whoever's sitting top or near the top of the Premier uh, the championship, you know, someone like a Cali Thistle or Park Thistle, Ray Throvers, someone like that. If he does not have more of an impact in the first team, um yeah. I think that uh, Lewis Miller as well could oh, maybe he's too old for a loan though. Um, How old is he? Twenty three. Twenty three, I think. And for me, the one that I would like to see is uh, Joe Neal. I think he's, you know, he's been through Hecky, Jack Ross, Sean Maloney, David Gray, Eddie May, and now Lee Johnson. I just think it's it's time for a it's time for a change of scenery for both. I think both parties would would benefit from that. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think I agree. You can maybe see Paul Hanlon leaving. Maybe yeah, I mean, well, Paul, Paul will be you know come the come the end of next the end of this season. Paul will be pushing thirty three. Yeah, um, I think maybe and I we... think I think Paul's got ideas of where he wants his career to go. Sort of the later latter stages of his career. Yeah. Um and I think if there was an opportunity for him to go elsewhere, I think just. You know, not even looking for the club, but I think for his point of view, he'd probably like to take it. Yeah, I think, um, and, and maybe Dodge as well, um, permanently away. Yeah, if he doesn't well, do Dodge, it, Dodge has still, oh, he still got another year. Oh, does um, he? Well, come on, yeah, I might want to take him. Permanently. I don't think it's a great move for him because of the plastic patch. Oh well. In all honesty, but I do like that. Well, I, I do like it. And I don't like it because. We've given him to a competitor, but he can't directly hurt us, but he can indirectly. Yeah. You know, if he's banging in goals mm-hmm. for Kelly, they're going to fly up the league. So I don't think um, that we're going to need to worry an awful lot about Coman at this season. Yeah, I mean to be, to be honest, fair, yeah. they were well they were well, well worth their victory at Tincastle during the week. Um well worth it. And I know, but they've won like twelve times there or something since Ah, their record at Tynecastle is ridiculous. I think that in the last eighteen or nineteen games, they've played at Tynecastle. They've won twelve. Hearts have only won like three. Yeah, it's it's quite embarrassing for for our neighbours, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So I that that one's you can't really answer it with certainty. But for me, if I was to pick one, who I would have have still have high hopes for, it would be it would be Tavares. Yeah, I think, and it wouldn't be a permanent. It wouldn't be a permanent departure. It'd be some some form of loan deal. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, next one is from Jeff Ashton, and I'll I'll literally read it word for word. I like the sound of the six foot four inch big bastard up front. <laughs> Something we've been lacking for all of Cad's crosses. Yeah, no, I think that we I covered this certainly in the player ratings that. It's a dynamic that we've been missing. Obviously, you could talk about Dodge, but Dodge isn't a six foot four. Yeah. Uh, I think if you ask Gavin Wilson of Hibs Talk, um, he'd be delighted to have a a big six foot four boy in in the, uh, in the box because he, he loves Chris Cadden and all his crosses. <laughs> if you're listening, Gav, um, that's that's how we shout out for you, mate. But um, nah, it's um. Like I say, it gives us a, a different dynamic to have a big bastard up front. Maybe he'll be our Ellis Sims. You never know. I said that yeah. on the spaces last night. I uh, actually came out with absolute drivel. Like, is Harry McCurdy what we need? Or should we be going for someone who's big, tall, strong, fast like Ellis Sims? Yeah. And it looks He's... like we've got both. So, what an he idiot seems I am. to... He seems to be see when you look at him, right? When you watch that that clip 
just purely from his look and his physique, he looks like Haaland. Haaland, Haaland. Haaland. No, but this guy, you know what I mean? This gangly, deceptively quick left footed striker. Yeah. Um, uh, he seems as if th- this new sort of generation of, you know, laddies that can be big, gangly, but also rapid, you know, once they get ahead of steam. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not in. I've had, I've had egg on my face for January when I said that we'd sing the Haaland Regen and Melkerson, but... He's um, not quite the same, is he? Different type uh, of He seems like he could be that type of build. And even if he can be 10% as good as what Haaland is, we'll have a, we'll have a player on our oh, hands. Absolutely. Uh, next one is for our good pal, King of the North, Billy, the father of the twins. Um, now, this is a bit of... We need to be careful with what we say because... We don't really know. Um, we got McCurdy over the line, thankfully, but with the alleged changing of the agreement so late on, could this put other clubs off doing business with us in the future? Now, this is what I kind of alluded to at the start. Um, I mean, we were following, there was a, a guy, Ryan, who seems to be like a predominantly Swindon area-based journalist who had his finger deep in the, the McCurdy pie yesterday. Yeah. Um, and at one point the deal was off, the deal was on you know there was various different reports coming out about um, you know he travelled up late on Tuesday he'd been at HTC all day yesterday an agreement was done deal was done the medical was done, the interviews were done club photographs were done, everything and then Hibs tried to change, sort of reshape the deal um, I, I think the I'm... only the only people that know what went on are the people in the room, and I think it's yeah. unfair on Hibs, it's unfair on McCurdy, and it's unfair on Swindon for us to speculate on yeah. anything what might have went on. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to take what journals take uh, with a pinch of what journals say with a pinch of salt. Yeah, like the Football Scotland page. Yeah, and they said it was off. They say that it was completely off. I think um, every every club sort of has their. I mean, ours is obviously Patrick McParlin. He's our sort of go to, and he never said um, that. He never anything. said anything like yeah, that. Yeah, he was he was very very quiet. I think one thing we can say for certainty is that, and I've got my own opinions of Ian Gordon, um, and his perceived role at the club that I won't go into. But I think, based on what Ron has said, the way that deals are structured, Ian Gordon had zilch to do with us. He has zilch to do with the negotiation side. That is, you know, he said that Ian identifies Johnson OKs, Ben negotiates. I'm actually going so, to come out and say this, Craig, and I think that Ian Gordon is an easy scapegoat for Hibs fans. And Hibs fans are, well, I mean, not all Hibs fans, but there's a, a large portion of Hibs fans who were having a go at Ron Gordon and Ian Gordon yesterday. I wrongfully so in my opinion because you look at what they've done for us so far in this window they've put their hand deep in their pocket um, and I think that Ian Gordon like you say there he's not really got anything to do with the negotiations but it was him that was getting dug out by a lot of folk yeah, there was a, a page that was made saying Ron and Ian Gordon out of the club and I think yeah. that's just a silly way to think about it I think for me I'm going to disagree with you like quite strongly on that. In terms of the, um, you know the, the easy targets. I think the club have made a rod for their own back with this, with Ian being announced as the head of recruitment on the website. Fans noticed that it was taken off. And it was then slightly put back on again. Um, Ron said in a podcast, uh, you know, I was on it. Uh, the initial one after Sean Maloney got sacked, that Ian headed up a team of recruiters, so he's a head of recruitment. If he's identifying players and they have to go through him, he's the head. My issue is, I don't... If there is a genuine succession plan for the club, right, Ron's no spring chicken. You know, he's... Like well, like all of us, he's getting on. Unfortunately, he's a wee bit further ahead than what we are. If there is a succession plan in which Ian will eventually take over the club in the event of anything happening to Ron, I've got no problem with that at all. 
Mm-hmm. I genuinely have zero issue with that. My issue is that you're given an unqualified person arguably the most important role in your footballing department. Outside, you could even argue they're more important than the manager, than than the players as a collective, because they are the ones that set the strategy. They're the ones that... Do you know what I mean? I just... I, I don't... Is, and Ron could easily have kiboshed this. You know, we could, we had, we've had interviews with Steve Keane when he took over, when he got appointed as the academy manager... Um, you know, Ben Kinsell, Ron himself. We've never heard from Ian. We've never heard from Ian. Ian, What's your Ian role? was on down the slope, to be fair. I, but it was very, but it, it was very in the background. It wasn't really. I know he spoke on it, but he wasn't the subject of the, the um the podcast. I think it was primarily Ben and Ian was there. I think so, yeah. But the but there's never been an explanation of his role at the club, what his qualifications are, what his. You know, what I mean, it's you would you wouldn't pick me. You wouldn't if my dad took over Hibs, he wouldn't give me the manager's job. That's a to me. That's effectively what what this is. Yeah. No, I'm, then, I'm, I just for me. I, just, I agree I do with you. I, I, do, I do. I do agree with you. But of, I think it is a it is a he is an easy target because he's the the owner's laddie. I, no, of course, but then the owners put. Made him made his lad an easy target by putting him in the role that he's put him in. Yeah, no, I, and I can see where you're coming from, like, but you've got effectively. I, I don't think you can knock what they've done off the park. Um, you know the hospitality suites look incredible. Um, the the big screens, you know, had a great touch. The LED strips, the HFC in the the east stand. Um, remains to be seen the state of the famous five stand when I go tomorrow because. I reported it to to Kieran Power that all the seats were covered in bird shit. You're a grass. Um, well, if, mate, I'm not paying four hundred quid a year to sit surrounded in bird shit. My laddies couldn't even sit down oh. because their seats were caked in shit. That's man. Um, so off the park with you know we're admittedly in the best position we've ever been in, but yep. to me that is all a moot point if nothing's right on the park and you've got a guy who's never owned a football club appointed a CEO who's never ran a football club. They've also appointed a guy as a head of player recruitment who's never recruited for a football club. So you've got three people, the most three important areas in the business structure overall, all underqualified or not qualified in the particular area that they're in. I know, but if, Whereas, we, go on and, think... if we go on and get third this season though, then then, then what? It's still not good enough for me. It's still, it doesn't, because we've already got third with that structure. And look what happened. The, the, the season we got third, Graham Mathy was involved. And then when the whole shit hit the fan with the centre defender last year, the striker last year, look at where we ended up. Compare us to a year ago. I, I, we must be coming up to the, the anniversary of that Rangers game soon when Portress got sent off at Ibrox. Yep. And we were in a great position. I'm sure we might have even been top of the league. Now, top of the league at the start of the season means nothing, really. But it gives you a kind of outlier of where you're going to go during the season. And the season fell apart as soon as Portugal got sent off. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. And then that. Graham Matthew becomes a scapegoat and he goes for the whole end of the transfer window, the chasing of Jamie McCart and Jamie McGrath, blah, blah, blah. But for me, I just think we need we need a clear structure. Like I said, I've got no no issue with Ian Gordon being involved at the club whatsoever. If it's eventually going to be his club, it's important that he learns about all facets of the the club. You know, so he can be best placed to make decisions, especially if he's based in Edinburgh. Um, you know, and Ron trusts him, but he doesn't need to be the head of player recruitment. That needs to be someone with experience in Scottish slash British football who has a clear ethos, a clear identity, and a clear a line and a standard. I mean, who who's going to go to Ron and say, lad, look, Ron, this isn't working with Ian? Nobody. Yeah. How would you yeah. How would you take an employee, you know what I mean, coming up to you and saying, your son's doing a shite job? You wouldn't. Nah, so, I, can, I, I can see where you're coming from, but I, I, I do think that he's been dug out unnecessarily because I think that the recruitment on the whole this summer has actually been 
pretty good. I've been happy with the players that we brought in. Remains to, remains to be seen. I think... a, a lot does remain to be seen. No, of course. But on the face of it, I, I'm happy with, with where we are as a squad. Would I you think we probably could have added another centre half, but other than that, I'm happy. Would you be as happy if Boyle never came back, though? I can almost guarantee that you wouldn't. Nah, probably not. That masks a lot for me. But you do need to give the club credit for getting it done. Yeah. But no, you do. We just, we just, we need to stop this kind of all the commercial stuff and all the oh, look at the great new hospital. Like we know, right? It's done. It's done and dusted. They're great. They're there. They're generating record revenue for the club. Amazing. We now need to get it right on the park. And I still, I don't know, for me, there's still two or three parts missing in terms of the overall overall structure. You might, you might see us dip into the free agent market, though, but I think we've gone on a bit of a tangent for that question, though. No? Yeah. So basically, Billy, could this put other clubs off doing business with us in the future? I don't know. I because think it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's unfair to say what actually really know, went but wrong. What, I don't what think. I can say, I think with absolute certainty, is based on the information we've already had from the club, Ian Gordon had nothing to do with any negotiations with the club. Zilch. Yeah. I would even go as far as to be surprised if Gord, Ian Gordon had anything to do with McCurdy whatsoever. Mm hmm. I think it's probably a. a he would have been well known to Johnson and McAllister, as well as the Kukarevich with the City Group connections. Yeah. Um, Anyway, next uh, from Callum. Uh, based on yesterday, what have the club learned from previous transfer windows? And what is it we, the fans, seem to see that the club board slash management can't regard in our midfield? I said that to one of my mates in a group chat, uh, a message yesterday. And that very often the football fans agree on it. Look at us, we've just sort yeah. of, you said one thing about the Gordons, I've said another. But I think almost unanimously, Hibs can agree, Hibs fans can agree that we lack in midfield. And we have done for we a do very long time. Field, yeah, but I mean, that could be sorted with McGinnis staying fit and bringing Del Fieri back or not sending him out on loan in the first place. Mm. Adds another couple of bodies in there. I think your starting midfield is always going to be a three of McGinnis, Kenny, Newell, JDH or Campbell. Yeah. I think that's what Hibs fans need to kind of accept. I don't think that we we're not in a position to go and and buy the best players from the rest of the league. Uh, that's that's not our game. It's not been our recruitment uh, no, for the I last agree. couple of seasons. <clears throat> I think that there's more than enough quality in that mid in in those options. I think that you could maybe add one more to bolster it, but. You know we're going to end up with an awful lot of players for three spots. So how are you going to keep everyone happy? No, I agree. I agree. I think it's <sighs> still the the midfield is an is an issue for me, and I think that will unfold throughout the season. Like you say, what if about McGuinness? We don't know because he's never had a sustained run of fitness in the team. We just need to. We just kind of need to trust the process at the moment. It sounds very Mikel Arteta, but um, yeah. we need we need to trust in what the club has done. There's obviously a reason that they've not brought in another midfielder. Where whether that be they were trying to get one, and couldn't get it, or yeah. they just have looked at our options and thought we'll be good till January, or mm -hmm. there's maybe people that they're looking at who are unattached at the moment. I think we no, just need to trust the club because there's there's absolutely no use now when they shut. There's absolutely no use now in, in crying out for a midfielder, midfielder, midfielder because we're not going to get one. Yeah. And if, no, you, and if you pick up a free agent at this point, then there's a reason that they've went the whole summer without getting a club. And look how long opinion. it took Jackson Irvin to get going when he signed as well. Like That's the issue. That's the problem for me is when you pick somebody up yeah. in that area. Um. Right, I think that's it, questions-wise. A uh, quick preview tomorrow. Obviously, Kilmarnock at Easter Road. Like we said, they picked up a big win on Wednesday, knocking hearts at the Cup. So that'll make it 60-plus years since hearts have won the week up. 
winning two cups <clears throat> in the Not for everyone in the two thousands isn't for everyone. Um, so I how what what you thought? I mean, I don't know in terms of availability for tomorrow. I think McCurdy's still got a game suspension. Does that count um, up? Yeah. Well, he might not even be, he might not even be ready to play anyway because of the FIFA clearance. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and if, uh, we don't know about the, the the situation with Kukarevic. If he'll, I've seen it. I've seen it somewhere. Um, I'm sure that Ukrainians, because of the situation in their home country, they have been given some form of special dispensation to Maybe. not require a work permit. But because he's been playing in France, I don't know if that'll apply to him. Who knows? Um, just having a look I, at Kilmarnock's recent results, though, just just because you said about them picking up a, a good win at Tynecastle, they've only won once in the league so far this year. So have we. Oh yeah, so we have. They <laughs> they drew they drew one one with United, beat by Rangers, beat by Celtic. It's been a, it's been a tough opening for them. Yeah. Beat by Rangers, beat by Celtic, beat by County, and then they won against Motherwell, uh, last Saturday, and then obviously beat Hearts through the week. So they're off a couple of Decent good results. wins. Yep. So they'll probably come to us with a lot of um, a lot of confidence. No, I think they will, and we, you know, you're going to get with Derek McInnes' side as well. And um, we've seen it over the years how frustrating at times it was, especially with Aberdeen teams that went one 0 up and just sat and went come on in. That must have been what they did just... on Wednesday night, though. Against Hearts. Not for what I've not for what I've heard. I've heard that they actually played quite well. So. I suppose plus point is Dodge will only be available. I think, yeah, them. and I was just thinking about yeah. that. It's it's not as if they'll be going, oh, fuck, we're missing Dodge for this game because he's no played for them. So, yeah, it's... you've got players like Fraser Murray will be... He'll be up for it. Ollie, impact, Shaw, will be up Ollie for Shaw, it. Kyle Lafferty, another one. Aye, so, fucking hell. I, I mean, forgot about that. I said earlier that we wouldn't have to worry about come on at this season. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean... I think this this is probably you know we've had quite a hectic summer. Um, this is probably the first game where we'll get a chance to sort of take stock of where we are, you know, and really look to to put a marker down. I mean, yeah. our overall record v Kelly is pretty is good. Great. I mean, we've won our last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've won our last seven against them. Mm-hmm. Um, home and away. The last defeat was two 0 um, away down there under was that Neil Lennon when he Hecky? No, it was Hecky. Oh, was just it Hecky? before Hecky got just before Hecky got sacked, yeah. But even then, home 5 3 at home. The last time they beat us at Easter Road was 2014. We've kind of been like ships passing the night. Though, that was uh, the last game they beat us, was the game where Rod Petrie shut the doors and told BT to fuck off. <laughs> Remember, in Chris <laughs> at Easter Road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I uh, I'm two 0 Hibs. I think this is the game where it starts to it starts to click. And I think it needs to because the longer we go without not only I think the performance is almost important as the win. We need a convincing victory, a comfortable yep. victory. Even if it's one nil, but it's comfortable. Yeah. I think for me, I can't see Kilmarnock not scoring. Uh, with Lafferty and Murray and Shaw and all that, I think they will score. But I think, and hear me out here, I think it's going to be four-one Hibs. But it's going to be one of them ones where you walk away and you're like, that was never a four-one game. I think it'll maybe be two-one until the last ten minutes or so, and we'll get a couple. Or it could be, it could be one or two gone on five or six. That's yeah. the thing. We didn't actually know what we're getting for this team just yet. We don't, and that's a uh, that's part of the fun, isn't it? Exactly. Right, well, I think we'll wrap it up. Well, we do a pie what? review of uh, of the Easter Road Pies next week. We, would, uh, we, uh... we can, but I'm away at the start of next week, so I don't know when we're going to get a chance to record, because then I'm away to Mallorca the following week as well. Oh, yeah, well, maybe, well, maybe we'll need to draft Michael back in, see yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> uh, see if he can be bothered with us. Um, yeah, exactly. No, thanks. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll be, we will be back next week um, with our review. Actually... We could do a review Sunday night. Why don't we do Sunday that night. then? Why don't we do that? Do a review Sunday night. Yeah, I'll be I'll be in the I'll be in the hotel in the morning Sunday night. So uh, off to see the wee man for his first day at primary school. 
amazing. Which will be which will be good. So I thanks for listening. Um, give us a follow across all the socials: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Hub Ramble, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, YouTube. We are most active, I'd say, on the Twitter. So if you've got yep. anything anything for us, if you want to have a bit of power, just uh, just reach out to us on the 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 Twitter at the Hub Ramble. And we'll see you again next week. Perfect. See you later. Thank you for listening.